Good morning, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for our webinar, which is all about overcoming your resistance and embracing virtual networking. We have an hour together today, so let's get started. My name is Danielle Andrews, and I will be facilitating today's session. And it's such an honor to be hosting this session from the beautiful unceded territory of this people. I invite you to take a grounding moment, feeling your feet on the ground and arriving in this space. I know we're all virtually in different places, but if we can just take a moment and root down feeling the presence of your feet on the ground and recognizing the unceded territory in which you get the opportunity to live. So let's just take a moment and have a moment of gratitude. All right. So again, my name is Danielle Andrews and I'm the outreach officer at WeBC and I'm so passionate about supporting women entrepreneurs realize their business potential and that's really what we do at WeBC. I'm going to take a moment and give you an overview of the services WeBC provides because we are such a resource for you. We were actually founded as a loan fund because it was identified that women were struggling to access the capital that they needed to start and grow their businesses. So yes, we offer a loans program up to $150,000 and we fund businesses that are women led from startup all the way to growth. We also offer these wraparound services. So business advising, this is a complimentary service that we offer. And these are one-to-one -one appointments and you can connect with experts on so many different topics, anywhere from, I need to work on my marketing strategy to I need help doing a cash flow projection, whatever it may be. Our advisors are really, really experts in all stages of business. So we invite you to connect with our client services team and get a business advisor referral through us. Then we've got our skills development workshops exactly like this. Welcome. You're in the right place. You found our skills development workshops. So we love to host spaces like this virtually on topics like networking and anything in between all to help you grow your business. Then we've got mentoring connections and we've got different groups like peer mentoring groups, one-to-one. -one. Sometimes our mentoring programs are specific to a topic. And so I invite you to check us out on our website to learn more about our wonderful mentoring programs. And then of course, we've got a supportive community. So that's everyone on the call. Thank you so much for being here, for being a part of our community for supporting women entrepreneurs. And, uh, you know, when we get together, we can really move mountains. And, and I truly believe that when we come together, um, we can support each other in our businesses. And especially it's holiday season. So if you're looking how to support women entrepreneurs, that's a great way um, to actually go into their businesses and, and uh, put your money there. Okay. So now on to today's session, um, I, I want to tell you a little bit about why it's so important to cover virtual networking. So love it or hate it, virtual networking is here to stay. If you're a business owner, networking is critical to growing your business. In fact, 73% of women entrepreneurs we've surveyed say that access to new networks is essential to their success. Virtual networking can be an effective way to save time and reach new markets. So how do you ensure you make valuable connections without feeling like a salesperson? Today, we are going to host Sue Maitland, networking expert and life coach, who will share some secrets to successful virtual networking. So I'm going to take a moment and read Sue's bio because there's so many details in here. I want to make sure I get the full message across. So 
After a successful career in the world of IT a little over 10 years ago, Sue took the leap and left her corporate job to follow her passion and train to become a professional life coach. Accredited through the International Coach Federation at this PCC level, Sue now specializes in helping others make inspired professional and personal transitions. One of the biggest challenges Sue faced as being a new business owner was learning how to overcome her resistance and to become a proficient networker. She joined networking groups and gradually reframed her view on networking and become, became much more confident and comfortable with it. Over time, Sue learned to love networking, although she realized that it was still something that was challenging for many people. She decided to do something to help them. Her Networking for Success workshop was originally developed to help newcomers to Victoria integrate into the city, make friends, and find work. Soon, her coaching clients in career transitions were clamoring for access to this material too. Since then, hundreds of people have completed her course, found a speedy path to become more confident and proficient at networking. Sue is now a passionate advocate for the need for everyone to build a strong supportive network and she believes that it can transform both your personal and your professional life. Sue Maitland, it's such an honor to have you here. Thank you so much. I'm going to stop sharing my screen and welcome you to take our stage. Thank you so much. Everyone, so let me just get this up and I'm going to start the slideshow. If I can just get this move down. <laughs> Sorry about this. We uh, had a little challenge. Let me see, I think if I, ah, I've got a little, ah, uh, there we go, slideshow. Thank you for your patience. I, even though I was in the tech world before I became an entrepreneur, I'm a low tech gal. So <laughs> please, <laughs> I hope that you. looks amazing, Sue. That's great. We can see your screen. Can you? Okay, perfect. All right. Your yeah. video is off. If you want it off, I'm not sure. Oh, I can have it on. I think if I can get to it. Let me just. I think I just wiped down. Um, not sure how to do. Okay, we're going to go with this. So we'll we'll get when I get out of here. You can see me again. Oh, it says start your video. So let me see. There we go. Okay, lovely. So welcome, everybody. I really appreciate this opportunity. I love what uh, WeBC does, helping women entrepreneurs. I am a woman entrepreneur. I didn't necessarily think of myself as that when I retooled to become a coach. I was just so passionate about coaching. And then I realized, oh, I'm a business owner too. And, and I have to find clients. How am I going to do that? So I'm going to share a little bit about my networking story. You've heard a little bit about how uncomfortable I used to be about networking. Um, I'm going to help you perhaps if, if any of you have that discomfort, I suspect some do, how to reframe those, those beliefs that hold us back. We're going to talk some more a little bit about those benefits of virtual networking. And then I'm going to share, I've got 10 top tips for virtual networking, then we'll have time for Q&A as well. So we're going to start, oops, why am I not going down here? Uh, maybe I've got to do this. Oh, there we go. Okay. Yeah, so my first networking experience was not a good one. Um, I have been told that I should do more networking. I hadn't done any networking. So my boss said, you really should go and network. And there was a women's networking group in town. And so I had signed up for it. So I'm going to just share my next slide and I'll explain to you. Um, this experience was totally traumatic. Um, I was walking towards this event and I was totally dreading it. I was in the full flight, flight freeze mode. You know, I, I, truthfully, I just wanted to turn tail and, and run. Um, I hadn't done any research. I had no idea what to expect. I didn't know anyone there. I was going on my own. I, I didn't know how. I, I didn't even know how to introduce myself. So my plan was I was going to just find a seat and just talk to the person next to me, which is not really networking, but I guess it is to a degree, but it isn't It isn't the purpose of a networking event. Anyway, that was my strategy. However, something uh, quite different happened. I talked to the people at the who were, who were signing us in and I, rather foolishly looking back, shared with them that I had never been to a networking event before, I didn't know anyone. And in my mind, they would connect me with someone 
introduce me so that I could have that one-on-one -on -one dialogue. But that isn't what happened. Um, one of the ladies um, behind the desk said, hey, I've got just the thing for you. And she came out and put a uh, butcher's apron, just kind of like this one, over my head. I'm protesting. I'm saying, no, no, I didn't know what was going on, but I knew it wasn't good. <laughs> it wasn't me sitting quietly in the corner. Then she brought um, one of the straw boaters. If you've, you've seen the barber's uh, shop quartet, you know, that one of those, she puts that on my head. And and I, I still, I'm not clear what's happening. But then she produces raffle tickets. And she says, here, off you go. Go sell these raffle tickets. You're going to meet so many people. Can you imagine? I was, I was, I was traumatized. I did as I'd been asked, however, and I did sell some raffle tickets, but it was not the networking experience that I wanted to have. And it was actually quite a few years before I actually ventured into another networking event. It was, it was definitely traumatic. So um, let's go on to the next slide. Oops, sorry. Um, sorry, it's not. There we go. So I want to share with you, how did I overcome this fear? And it really was, as you, I've told you, it was very traumatic. It took took me quite a long time to get over it. And, and really, it was forced upon me because of becoming an entrepreneur, of deciding that I wanted my own coaching practice, that I wasn't going to work in-house and have people sent to me who needed fixing. I wanted to work with people who knew that they wanted to make a change in their life and were looking for some support to really understand themselves better so that they could really make a powerful um, and inspired change. So here's what I did. I, I ended up, you know, facing my fears and it was difficult, but I joined a local networking group and we used to meet every, I think it was every other week. So every second week. And, um, and I, there were some very experienced people in that group. So I was able to notice how they went about networking, how they introduced themselves. And, and so I started to practice what I wanted to say and refine my introductions. I, I learned to be curious and ask good questions so that I could learn more about other, other people. And I did my research. I, I looked to see where, where, are the, where are the other places I could network where the people I want to meet could be. And the other thing that, that I think people don't really think about, but the, one of the joys for me of networking is being able to look for opportunities to help other people. Now, if you don't have a network, if you're not putting yourself out there, you don't get to meet these other people. So you aren't able to do that. But for me, that was a, a big, um, uh, one of the one of the most wonderful things for me about learning learning to network and overcoming my fear. So let's talk about uh, the, the three keys, I think, to, to becoming a successful networker is to do your research. And we'll talk about that throughout the presentation. And prepare. You know, we, you want to be prepared with what you're going to say and, and um, open-ended questions as well. Uh, and then practice. I, I mean, I know everybody talks about you want to be authentic and just be yourself. Well, yes, you do want to be yourself, but you want to be your best self, not, not just yourself anyhow. So this is, this is what will help you. And my, my whole um, training course um, that's online it is designed to help you step by step through that process so that you can be totally ready to go in there and have a, a wonderful experience. And if I can go from being traumatized about networking to loving it and speaking at conferences and being an advocate for it, then you can too if you've got some discomfort. So I want to share with you, these are some of the limiting beliefs that, that people told me. I mean, one of the things I would start my workshops with is, like, tell me what is it stopping you from networking? And some of these might resonate for you. I mean, for, for me and for a lot of people, it's like, I just don't know what to say when I meet people. Um, perhaps you don't know where to go to meet the people that you want to meet. This is a big one for a lot of people. I, I'm afraid others will judge me. I, I don't, I'm not going to match up. There's a lot of powerful women here or other people here, and, and I won't, they'll judge me. Um, not having time. Now, frankly, we're all busy. We all have full schedules. But as business owners, if we do not make time for networking, we are really doing ourselves a disservice because networking is one of the best ways to connect with clients or other businesses that you could collaborate with. I hear a lot that I'm an introvert, so I can't network. It's for extroverts. And that really isn't true. I can tell you that a lot of extroverts are also uncomfortable or perhaps don't know how to network well. And introverts can be very successful networkers with a little bit of preparation and practice. I'm not saying you're going to be as comfortable going into the room as an extrovert, 
but you can certainly get yourself to a place where you're much more confident. Um, it feels inauthentic. So yeah, so there's this sense that perhaps you've got to be, you know, pretend to be someone you're not. That is not what networking is about. You you do, as I said, you want to show up as your best self, but you want to be you. You're not trying to, you can, you probably all had an experience where you've met someone who's just not uh, too busy trying to impress you and, and you never get to know who the person is behind that persona that they're presenting. You don't want to be that person. But you do want to come through with a measure of confidence in being able to tell people what your service that you provide or the goods that you provide and the difference you make for people. I was one who couldn't make small talk. I, I just did, didn't know how to do that. I was always about the work or something else specific, but it wasn't. I didn't, didn't have those skills. And a lot of people have that challenge. Um, not having an elevator pitch. So when somebody says to you, so what do you do? I, I didn't really have, I, I was so, uh, I remember, I was so in love with coaching. I thought I'd just tell people I'm a coach and they'd understand all the value that I brought. <laughs> but for a lot of people, 10 years ago, I mean, now I think pretty much everyone probably knows a coach or knows someone who has been coached and has a bit of an idea. But 10 years ago, it was still extremely new. It was mostly for executives. And the idea that, you know, anybody could have a coach. Um, I had to learn that I need to explain why. What, what do I do? You know, what's the difference that I make for people? Um, there's a fear that you, you're going to end up stuck talking to people that you really don't want to talk to. One of the things that I share in my course is, is how to politely extricate yourself from that situation. It's a little more difficult in a virtual networking environment because generally you're put into a room. But the good thing about it is for a limited period of time. And, and there's still ways that you can switch the topic if, if there's somebody monopolizing the time and, and going down a rabbit hole that isn't really helpful for everyone. This idea of having to put on this act and try to impress people was a story that a lot of people have about networking. Um, some people are concerned I'm going to have to share personal information. Um, you don't have to. You can choose what you share, you know. Obviously, sometimes those sharing some stuff can build trust, and but it's a judgment thing. Knowing what to wear to fit in is really important. I actually went to a conference. <clears throat> it was a tech conference. And I hadn't done my research and um, I thought it was going to be very casual. So I had my jeans on and I packed light and everything. And it was a two, two to three day conference, fully, you know, busy all the time. And I was underdressed and I felt so uncomfortable. Everyone else was in suits and, and there's me in my jeans. And it would have been so simple. I could have just asked. I knew a number of people who were going who'd been before. I just had to ask them. So what's the dress code? So, you know, simple things like that that you can do. I really didn't see the value in networking. I, I thought it was a waste of time. I was busy. I had my work. I had my home. And I didn't have time for it, I thought I thought. Or it just like it's not my thing. So these are these are many feelings that people have, and I'm sure some of you can relate to one or two of them. So what I said about doing was reframing these beliefs, reframing the whole networking experience, and um, knowing what, what to say when you meet people. And, and again, it requires a little bit of prep, but you know it's worth taking that time so that you can do it. Doing that homework and research so that you know where to go. You're not wasting your time going to places that are not a good fit for you. Once you've done that and you've done that prep, you can show up feeling more confident in who you are and, and, and just be your authentic self. Um, knowing what you have to contribute. And, and here again, you can you can bring your connections that you could share with other people. Looking for ways to help other people is a wonderful way to get out of the, oh, I've got to impress people and, and sell myself to, you know, what can I do to help other people? If you walk through the room or into the breakout rooms with that mindset, it can make a big difference. Um, once you realize the value of networking, you tend to make time in your calendar for it. I have to tell you the true story. With virtual networking, when, when COVID came along, I really craved connecting with people. So I was so missing live networking and I discovered virtual networking. And at first it was a bit scary, but then I started to realize, oh, I kind of love this. And I ended up with too many networking events in my calendar. So many that I couldn't always follow up afterwards, but um, it became more of a priority. I had to prioritize which of these events do I really, should I be going to, where, where are the greatest value for me and this is where having a strategy for your networking and a plan something else that's in the course is it's important um 
remembering that you know others are probably a little uncomfortable too you're not the only one it isn't natural to walk into a room or into a virtual room where you don't know anyone but just reminding yourself that you're not the only one with a little bit of discomfort and then that commitment to show up as your best and most positive self I think I've got time for a little story here I was um I was invited by a client of mine actually to go to a women in finance event and as I and it, it was kind of towards the end of the week, it was a hot day. I was walking towards it and I was thinking, I won't do this. I'd really just rub it off. And I had a talk to myself as I was walking away. I said, Sue, you know, who knows what might happen here? You're gonna put a smile on your face, you're gonna put your shoulders back, and you're gonna be open to possibilities. Go in with that curious mind. And so I did. Um, I got my little glass of bubbly as I came in. So that was the first nice surprise. I uh, sat at a table with interesting people, some of whom I'm still in touch with today. But even better, over the dessert table, I just happened to mention to, I, I didn't know who it was actually, just somebody next to me. And I said, oh, these desserts are so good. I, I used to avoid them. But now that I do my self-care retreats, which I used to do once a month, um, you know, at the union club, we always have these delicious desserts and I've kind of got hooked on dessert. She said, you do self-care retreats? And I said, well, yes, I do. She said, my staff need self-care retreats. Can you come and see me? So this is one of the big banks who was, who was inviting me in to talk about my self-care retreats. And interestingly enough, during the conversation, she said, well, actually, you told me you teach networking as well. I mean networking as well. So it was my first paid networking gig for a business um, through me getting my mindset into a positive place and being open to possibilities. So it can really, your mindset is very important when you go to events. Having these good conversation starters are really important. Again, I'll give, I'll give you a couple in this presentation, but there's a lot more in, in my um, uh, workshop. Um, knowing how to politely move on if, if you need to. Um, showing up with that smile and that positivity can make a huge difference. And thinking ahead about what it is you want to share. Knowing the dress code, so you're dressed appropriately. And, and that mindset of looking forward to learning from others and seeing the value in networking. So that's that's what I think um, I'm hoping you'll get some of that today, but also in the course, the whole course is designed to, to help you kind of reframe it so that you can confidently have a great networking experience. So I wanna talk about the benefits of virtual networking. I mean, the biggest one for me was expanding my network and reach beyond local geography. And, and I've got an example right now, um, I have another, I have two workshops online. One is a priority setting one designed to create space for you to really get clear on your personal priorities, not the shoulds that everybody else is projecting onto you. And through my networking, I met someone in Australia. We had a Zoom meeting after we met virtually and we had another virtual meeting. And she introduced me to a friend who is now um, going to be um, a, a referral partner for my services. And so, you know, who knew that, that networking would connect me with someone in Australia, but that's what's possible um, when you sort of build on initial meetings and open to possibilities. Uh, one of the greatest things was there's no travel time and you haven't got to pay for parking or figure out where to park. Um, quite often they're free or relatively low cost to attend. You don't have to do that awkward thing of walking into a room and striking up a conversation because you are going to be put in a room. So you'll already, it'll be done for you if you like. You still have to speak to the people in the room, but you don't have to you know, break into that group that seemed to be busy chatting and that discomfort when you're standing there waiting for somebody to notice you. And of course you have all the other usual benefits of networking. You're gonna meet potential clients, collaboration partners, referral partners, and, and you grow because others will share their expertise and experiences. So you're learning all the time. So there's lots of benefits. And I should have mentioned up front, we are, because we've got quite a lot to get through, I'm totally open to answering your questions and we'll have time for that at the end. And I think Danielle's keeping an eye on that so that we can we can have time. So please do, don't hold back, put them in the chat and then we'll address it at the end. All right, so top tips for virtual networking. Number one is plan ahead. So again, it's really important to, your time is valuable. You know, spending time networking needs to support your goals for your business. So setting SMART goals, and I'm sure you've heard of SMART goals, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and, and time sensitive is really important. Um, and again, that's part of what we're doing in the course. 
Um, and then getting clear on who it is you want to meet. And in some cases, it might be a client, but in other situations, it might be a collaboration partner, another business that, you know, it could, could support you and vice versa. Um, you want to look online and you want to find the groups and events aligned with who you want to connect with. And, and uh, Danielle told me, and I did find it, that there is on the WeBC website, there's a whole bunch of networking places, some of which are virtual that you can use. So I think it's, it's definitely worth, maybe in the follow-up email, might be worth putting that link, Danielle, because I went to the website and I couldn't find it right away, but I Googled it and it came up. So um, that would be great. Um, research the format of the event, know what to expect. Um, so, you know, um, know if you're gonna have a one minute to introduce yourself or what other questions you might be asked. And you can do that by reaching out to the organizer and ask them. Most organizers are very happy to share with you what to expect. They want you to come to the event. They want you to have a good experience. Register early and put the event link in your calendar. And, and this is um, <clears throat> in Victoria in particular where I live, everyone's a last minute kind of thing. They leave it to the last few days and then decide that they're going to book. Now I've, I've got a, I do a virtual networking night for newcomers to Victoria. And last month it sold out and we had a wait list. This month I've upped the numbers and, and um, we, we haven't sold out yet, but I'm pretty sure we're going to at 50. I started at 25, we've gone to 50 and we'll see what happens. But you do not want to be one of those last ones who think, yeah, I do want to go to Sue's event and then find it's full. So make it a priority, put it in your calendar. The other thing that can be tricky is make sure that you've actually got the meeting link, the Zoom meeting link. I find with Eventbrite in particular, it can be confusing. They send you what looks like the link, but it really is just taking you back to the registration page. So make sure you've got the Zoom link and you've put that into your meeting notice. And be ready to be able to tell people when they ask you to tell me about what you do. Um, be ready with a succinct answer that has people kind of wanting to learn more about you. So that's planning ahead. The setup, and it is important, um, always try to join with your video on. It's really hard to connect with someone where you just see their name and you don't actually get to see them in person. It makes a huge difference. Check your lighting. Whatever you do, try never to be positioned with a, a window behind you or light behind you because you will be backlit and you've probably seen those people. You can't even see their faces or expressions because they're all in shadow because there's lighting behind them. So think about that. And if you have that lighting challenge, consider investing in a halo light, which is, is something you can attach to your desk or nearby. And um, it just makes a big difference. And it's usually around $50. So it's a good investment if you're going to be doing a lot of virtual networking. Make sure your background is tidy and attractive. I tried to do that. I think it doesn't look too bad. Uh, it's good that you can't see the rest of my office. It's not quite as tidy as this. But you know, when you're thinking about the camera being on, think about what people are gonna see. What is the impression that you're giving? Is it professional? I know sometimes you have to do it in a bedroom. so you can't, but I mean, just see what you can do to do that. If you're going to use a virtual background, only do it if you don't move around too much, because you've probably noticed when when people have that virtual background, if they're animated, as I tend to be, uh, that background gets a bit blurry and it can be a little bit distracting. So just know whether you can actually sit reasonably still, then by all means use that. And I, I find it's easier to connect from a laptop than a cell phone because you can more easily access the buttons and whatever else you need to do. So um, I always think it's great to arrive a little early for the meeting, you know, try to get there at least five minutes before the start. Um, you get a chance to test the link to make sure it connects, that you've got the right link to the meeting. Um, make sure your video and sound works. Refresh your memory about how it is that you're gonna introduce yourself. Have your conversation starters ready and take some nice deep breaths. Try to relax and remind yourself that you're prepared. You're open to possibilities. It's even going to be enjoyable. So just getting into that mindset and that smile. Remember that smile as you go into the room. It just makes you feel more approachable. People want to talk to you. And um, if you get let in early, which sometimes happens, you know, thank the host for letting you in early and and, and uh, have a chance to chat with them a little bit. I find uh, 
uh, if, if people show up super early to me, they're really keen and I'm going to let them in and have a little conversation before the, the main event starts. So um, think about that. Oh, come on. There we are. I do think you need to consider your appearance. So you are at home, but you never get a second chance to make that first impression. And, and an example of a young woman who was running a networking group for professional women. And um, she started up during COVID and, uh, or just before COVID, I guess. And when it went virtual, she would just show up every time in a wet shirt with a hood and it just didn't look professional. And this was for professional women. And so I think you want to be aligned with who it is you're going to be meeting with. Get a sense of, of how people dress. And just because you're at home doesn't mean you have to, you should dress down. You can still look professional. And, and, and do that research. Ask the host, you know, how do people normally show up? Um, if you do wear makeup, consider putting a little bit more on because cameras will generally wash you out a little bit. Um, do not uh, fall for um, wearing those PJ bottoms with Snoopy on them or sweatpants because you never know when the host is going to say, okay, we're all going to stand up and stretch now. And you could, um, yeah, have a little bit of a embarrassing experience there. So always have, it doesn't have to be super smart, but it needs to be something that's camera presentable, you know? So think about that. The jewelry should be really here. If you have those long necklaces that are going off the screen, it, it can be a bit distracting. Um, do think about what your what you're wearing looks like when you're sitting. Because I have some lovely cardigans that I love, you know, and they're kind of floaty. But when you sit down, they just look, I look very bulky in them. So I make conscious choices to have something a little more fitted when I'm on camera. And try to avoid stripes and busy patterns and textures. Textures in particular can make your eyes go funny again as you move. So try to go for solid colors if possible. Have a compelling introduction. So, and the idea really is to introduce yourself in a way that leaves people wanting to learn more. You may not have any more than a single sentence um, to, to introduce yourself, or you might actually get a whole minute in some, some places. Um, as a business owner, what you wanna do is describe the problem that you solve with your business goods or services. Um, and then if you have time, if you get to have more than just an initial sentence, Share your experience and qualifications and how you solve that problem. And then wrap up with the difference it makes for people who buy your product or service. So it's a really neat little way that, so people, by describing the problem that you solve, people can be thinking, oh, I need that, or I know someone who needs that. Um, so that's the idea. You're trying to plant the seed. You don't have to do the whole, and I'm really qualified because of this, but you can, if you have time and they're curious to learn more, you can say, well, Here's how I do that and, and tell them a little bit more on why you're qualified. And then and then generally the difference is what what do your clients, your customers say about those services that you deliver? And, and tweak this introduction until it's compelling and authentic and, and feel you can, it just flows naturally, it's you, but it is letting people know the difference you make. Practice it and, and then have two versions, have a 30 second one and the longer one minute version with all three components. Uh, we've already talked a little bit about this, bringing your most positive self, take those cleansing breaths, set aside everything that's been happening during your day and just focus on being fully present. Try not to be looking at this and multitasking. Um, people notice, you know, it's quite distracting. People will notice. And they'll judge. They'll say, well, she showed up, but she didn't really show up. She's got other things. Your, your message when you're doing that is that I've got other things going on in my life that are much more important than being here with you. So think about it. Try to, if you can, set aside that time. Now, there's a few times that you may go into a breakout room and there's an emergency, like you're waiting to hear that your daughter's had her baby or whatever. You can let people know at the beginning that, you know, I, have, I, might, I may have to take a call. But other than that, try to set those phones aside. Um, tell yourself it's going to be a positive experience and you, you, who knows who you're going to meet the smile again um, keep that conversation focused on positive things sometimes you'll have a bit of a negative Nelly you know and, and they're going down a rabbit hole of everything that's wrong try to bring them forward 
maybe by something like saying, oh, well, what's something you're actually looking forward to in the coming year? Getting them out of that negative. Because if someone's doing that and you just let them go on, they will just go on and they'll bring everybody down. So be the person who brings that positivity if you see that happening. Okay. Came through it pretty quickly, I think. Um, interestingly enough, be aware of the time constraints. <laughs> and in those breakout rooms, please try not to monopolize. So generally speaking, you'll go into a breakout room and you'll be told you have 10 minutes and there's two of you, five minutes each, or there could be three or four, but but notice how much time. Sometimes the, the person coordinating will actually come in into the breakout, or send you a little message, say time to change to the next person, but don't assume that that will happen. Um, so it's ideal that somebody puts up their hand to be the timekeeper, and that could be you. Um, you know, agree uh, up, up front how much time everybody's going to have, and you can use your timer on the phone, and you can even sort of wave it with the 30-second warning so that you're nicely letting them know it's time to wrap up and move on to the next person. I've been on some events where that didn't happen, and the entire, you know, 15 minutes was mostly taken up by one person and then we all got one minute, the rest of us got one minute to say something, you know. Don't be that person and try to help that person. If they're doing that, find a way to get their attention so they know it's time to move on. Um, and if nobody's starting, you're losing valuable time sometimes. People go, are you going to start? Oh, I don't know, should I? Just put your hand up and say, I'll go. And, and they'll be happy and then, you know, others will follow. Uh, you don't need to tell your life story in the breakout. What you want to do is share enough that people are interested enough that they want to follow up with you and learn more. Um, provide the best way for others to connect with you. So in the chat this morning, I put um, my um, website, I believe. I think I gave you that. And I gave you, or I gave my LinkedIn and I gave you a link to the um, uh, special offer that I have with, with the uh, networking bundle so so I put that there and um, I can easily be found on LinkedIn and then you can find all my contact information as well and try to always be thinking of ways you can support other people go in with that generous mindset I, I as I say I love especially with the newcomers that I meet but anybody if, if there's a resource or a group that I think would be a really good fit I want to share it I want you to have that information and people appreciate it. And then they remember and they might even think of something that could be beneficial for me. But I don't do it with that in mind. I do it by just helping other people. Um, okay. So let me talk to you. Okay. So, so the key is you don't want to go in with um, questions that can be answered with yes or no. That does not encourage dialogue. So open-ended questions that, that cannot be answered by yeah or no, uh, the way to go. Um, the idea is you're wanting to get to know each other a little and, and figure out, does it make sense to continue this dialogue? Um, quite often the host will actually give you the questions to ask each other in the breakout. But if not, um, you know, here's, this is one of my go-tos. How did you hear about this event? And what made you want to sign up? You know, it's, a, it's a, an interesting little insight. Um, uh, the ones that, what is an ideal client looking like for you? If you can ask that question, you can be thinking, oh, maybe I have a client who could be a good fit for this person. What's the biggest difference that you make for your clients? Everyone loves to be able to share that answer to that. And what type of people would be ideal new contacts for you? You can see they're all questions where you're clearly interested, you're wanting to learn, learn more from the other person, and who doesn't like to talk about their own business, you know, and share these things. Be a good listener. As I said, we've said this before, go with that curious mind. Give your full attention to the person who is speaking. Have you ever been in a situation where you're, you're talking to someone, but they're constantly looking over their, your shoulder and kind of looking out for perhaps someone else that they want to speak to? What is it telling you? It, it tells you that, that this, you, you're... They're not really present. It's the same as having that cell phone going in and, you know, looking at that as opposed to looking at the individual. While you're with that person, give them your full attention. If you don't want to stay with them long term, use one of my little techniques to extricate yourself politely. But while you're with them, give them that attention. Maintain the eye contact. Again, it's a little harder in the virtual because but you can still 
I mean, I, I have to tell you, there was an example of um, somebody I knew really well. He was on a panel and he spent the entire time. Everybody else was, it was an intense panel. It was about um, equity, diversity and inclusion. And everyone was being very passionate. And he spent all the time looking off to the side. And I talked to him afterwards. I said, how is it that everyone else was engrossed and you were doing something else? He said, I was taking detailed notes. <laughs> and I said, well, it looked as though. You had other important things. So you need to tell people, by the way, if I'm looking to the side, it's because I'm taking notes here, you know, so um, think about things like that. Um, yeah, we talked about the multitasking. I, I I recommend not eating, even if it's a lunchtime session. It can be quite distracting watching somebody eat their lunch. Somehow you just eyes go to that movement and you're wondering what they're eating. And uh, so I think you can have a sip of water or, you know, a coffee, but, but eating a lunch, I, I would turn the camera off perhaps if you absolutely have to have to have something to eat. You can't wait till the end. And, um, and acknowledge what that other person is saying with a nod or a thumbs up, you know, so they know that you've, you've been, they've been heard, you know, and then the follow-up, and this is so important. Um, I try to block off time either on the same day. People are so impressed if you actually have the time and, and manage to get back to them the same day. They feel, oh, she really wants to connect with me. Uh, that's so great. I feel good. Or even the next day. Now, you can't always do that, I understand. And I have followed up, I have to say, even up to a week after, and people are still welcome. You know, they welcome that. But it's very impressive if you do it in a timely way. It makes people really feel you're interested in them. I always like to thank the speaker in the chat. You don't have to do that for me today, but I'm just saying it, it's it's nice to, to do that. And I would always try to invite that speaker to connect because those speakers have big networks. And especially on LinkedIn, you connect with their network and suddenly all of those people in the network become your second level connections. And that makes it so much easier for you to reach out to them. So I really recommend it. Please connect with me if you're interested on LinkedIn. I've got 3,600 connections. They all become your second level connections if you connect with me. Um, I take time afterwards to take notes. And I, I write down everybody that I met in the breakout rooms. I write about the speaker and everything. And I have my notes there. And I remember what I talked about. And then I prioritize. Who is it that I want to follow up with? Ideally, about three people. You can't follow up with everybody you need but you know, up to three people that you really want to follow up with. Go visit their website, learn more about them and their business, and then invite them to follow up. And ideally, you know, share something that you've discovered about them or that they shared that you really liked so that you feel like there's feeling that connection. And then for those that you really want to go deeper with, invite them for a Zoom coffee meeting. That's how my connection with Australia happened. It was an initial Zoom coffee meeting. She introduced me to her friend. I had another Zoom coffee meeting and now, you know, I have somebody who's going to be an affiliate basically with my, my business. So, um, yeah, I think we might be, yeah, just, just we're wrapping up. Here's the reminder. So doing your research, preparing, and then practice, practice, practice. And then eventually you will just, it'll flow and you'll start to have fun and enjoy it. So thank you all so much. I think that's the wrap up here. Yeah, we've got time for Q&A, I think, still, yeah. And um, I've put, all, I've put my, so suemaitland.com is my website. My email is there. That link, which is also in the chat, if you just want to copy it, will take you um, to the networking bonus. It's a $400 US value for $125. And it gives you not only the course, but you get one-on-one -on -one time with me, where we go over your introduction. We look at your strategy and your plan and talk about where to go to network. You also get three months of a net networking mastermind. So what I've added is um, a virtual networking event for people who've completed the course and want a safe place to practice their, their networking. You get one built in with the course. I'm adding two more in this bonus. And I also get some, some bonus uh, conversation starters, which are always great to have. So um, that's available just until midnight on January 1st. So the clock is ticking. Uh, but it's still there's still time to take advantage of that. All right, I'm I'm. Uh, shall I come off out of my thing to answer the questions? Sure, oh, that'd be great. Yeah. Thank you so much, Sue. I loved that your presentation started with the key, you know, voices in our head. You know, 
at WeBC, we talk a lot about imposter syndrome and, and uh, you know, that crow or that negative voice. And so I love that your tips build off of that. And really, um, it's, it's strategies on how to bolster your confidence and really show up fully. Um, and I do relate to that, you know, I, I'm a quirky person, and I don't want to have to fit into this box. You know, I want to share my personality, because I know that when I share my personality, I'm going to make those meaningful connections. Um, so yeah, it's so great to see in the chat. Thank you so much. Um, Sue, I've, I see all these thank yous. Um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in now. Um, Sue, the other thing that I like that you said is, you know, when, when you're looking at the camera, you feel like you're making eye contact and someone did make a comment there, sorry, I can't share my video, I would be making eye contact. Um, but you actually called me out because when I was watching you, you know, I have three computer screens. I don't know if anyone is like me where you have the three screens. So I'm watching you like this, you know, and I'm, I'm feeling like I'm engaging with you, but that's actually my, my side profile. And I thought, oh, oh, maybe someone thinks I'm checking my email or maybe I'm distracted. So as soon as you said that I, I moved you into my, my actual screen. So I don't know if anyone else has ever done that before, but uh, oops. That That's was good. I didn't notice Danielle to be honest, but <laughs> but but it's good. Yeah, it's good to think about those things, right? Mm -hmm, absolutely. Okay. Um, Jesse has a question. So, where can I find virtual networking events, or um, yeah, other than WeBC website? Well, there there are a lot on the WeBC website, and and frankly, you can just Google them. You can Google virtual networking events for women if you want women's events. And, and then you just go check them out. Um, a lot of the ones that I would recommend are, are on the WBC website. There is another one called, let me think, what's it called? Oh, um, I wrote it down so that I could tell you and now it's gone. Um, I'll, I'll just see, female wave of change. Has anybody heard of female wave of change? Um, it's it's it is a networking event. It, it it group. It is virtual. It it is mostly business owners, um, and there's kind of a green uh, environmental kind of leaning towards that. They're all passionate about the environment. So if that's something that falls to you, that might be an interesting group for you. Um, female wave of changes or Canada, and so mm -hmm. um, yeah, you can find them if you just Google them. That they'll show up. Um, but yeah, there's there's a lot of networking groups for women entrepreneurs and um it's a great way to make connections and learn from each other you know um and the 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 australia connection came about through women speakers association which is an organization i've been part of for a lot of years um it's it's not right for everybody but for me i do quite a bit of speaking and that is quite a way that i often find clients so um it came through that but but frankly anywhere that you feel there's a bit of a synergy you've perhaps you know your service could dovetail nicely with what someone else is doing explore and even if it doesn't work out you've still got to know them a little bit better and who knows you may come across someone who would be a good fit for them that you can refer fantastic thank you uh, i do have a few questions that have come into the chat in the q a so um yvonne is wondering do you look at the screen or do you look at the camera and i'm doing that so right now i'm looking at the screen and right now i'm looking at the camera so I find it hard to just look at the camera. I, I honestly do look at the screen. I know in theory you should look at the camera, but I like to, then you're kind of not seeing the expressions of, of other people. So I think most people know that you are communicating with them if you're if you're facing them and uh, talking, you're, you're most likely trying to direct to them. So yeah, that's my thoughts there. If you okay. can do the camera thing, fine, but uh, it's not it's not really natural and you might be missing out on some body language things that are going on so okay and uh, I mean that's where my business idea brain goes someone needs to invent a camera that is in the screen so we don't have this problem so you know any women entrepreneurs in tech there's an opportunity there <laughs> um Jillian has a question here any advice if you're not seeing a networking event and you want to start your own well that's interesting yeah um well, I mean, 
there are many different places that you can advertise your events. And, and I did that. I mean, I started my, my virtual networking for newcomers. I found out the places where events could be posted. Eventbrite is one. And a lot of people do go and look on Eventbrite for events. Um, you can also talk to things like your Chamber of Commerce. They might have opportunities where they could let people know about it. Um, but, but certainly here in Victoria, and I'm pretty sure everywhere where you are, there are some event sites that talk about what's going on locally. It may even be in the local paper. So get clear what you what you what what the event's going to be. Um, get it up on a platform that people can go to and and register and and just get it out there. Um, I also have for it, I've built over time um, a mailing list of people um, who are people who generally meet, for example, newcomers to Victoria. So once a month, I will send them out the link to my next upcoming workshop. So start to build a link of people who are interested or people who are perhaps influencers in your community who will share your information with them. But again, you need the research and you think what it is you want to do, what, what you want to achieve, and then go out and make those connections. And, and then it'll start, you know, just start it, even if it's only two or three people, you've started and it will build and they'll tell other people. Um, so just keep doing it. Don't give up if it's only one or two people, it doesn't matter. It's a start. Um, yeah. Fantastic. I love that. And um, I do need to call out one of our board members who is on the call today, Kathy Kazell. Thank you so much for being here, uh, known as the connected woman and an Uber networker. So Kathy, I'm going to put you on the spot because that's, you know, I, I know you can handle it. Is there any kind of overarching advice you have for networking virtually or even in person? Well, it's and excuse my voice today. I'm under the weather. So thank God for virtual networking, right? So I can mm -hmm. still do these without worrying about getting anyone. Um, but no, Sue, thank you. Some great, great information here. And I think that, you know, if anything, my advice is to take one or two of what Sue has so, so graciously shared and implement them and then work on the next because I know a lot of people are very networking is like right <laughs> it's like oh no I have to talk to strangers yeah. um but um uh, you know what it is about I think I think if we just keep in mind and, and so you put out there and you said it's a, how can you be of assistance or how can you help and I think it's all about that framing of <clears throat> when you go to these events you're not pitching you're not selling you're there to make um make those connections and then to be able to build and then I'll say leverage, not abuse, leverage those to see in a mutual beneficial way so that both of you can, can. so networking is, oh, networking's fun. It's great. It's just, um, yeah, there's some, there's some really good tips. So thank you. I hope that answered your question. Oh, great. Thanks, Kathy. I, I love uh, your perspective and, um, Okay, we'll do one more question and then we'll wrap. Thank you, Marjorie, for popping that into the chat. At what stage do we start networking? I haven't registered my business yet and I don't have business cards or a website. Oh, I think it's never too early to start networking, you know, and, and uh, it's nice to have all those things, but you can still be talking about your business before it's a reality. And in fact, it's a great way to validate whether what you're thinking you want for your business is is resonating with people. And you might even tweak your, you know, how you present your business based on people's responses to what you do. So I would encourage you to, to get out there and talk about I'm going to be starting a business and here's the service that I'm, I'm here's the problem I'm going to be solving for people. You know, here's why I'm qualified to do this. And here's what I'm hoping. Here's what I see the difference I'll make. In, in people's lives when I deliver that service and just see what kind of reaction you get. And, and then you can you can use that uh, to figure out what you're gonna put on your website, what you're gonna put on your business card. Um, I mean, I do still believe in business cards. I love them. I think this whole thing of the, the QR code, it's not, it, first of all, I like business cards because I like to write notes on them of what, what it is I'm gonna follow up with and, and so on. Um, but so you can you can just get a business card for yourself if you haven't even named your business yet and and just talk in general about what you're going to be doing. But yeah, don't don't delay. Get, get out there. You don't have to have all of everything perfect. Do it messy. Just get started. Oh, I love that, Sue. And that really complements 
uh, what we talk about, especially in our starting a business info session, which is a free workshop that we host. And one of the keys to a great business plan is primary research. And primary research is going out and doing that market validation. And that is before you start figuring out, you know, how does that business name roll off my tongue as I speak about it? Am I stumbling? Can people pronounce it? Do they know what I'm talking about? So Marjorie, absolutely uh, take Sue's advice. It's never too early um, and, and just get started. So um, thank you so much. I do see there's one other question. Let's see if we can sneak it in. What should the level of formality be? Hmm interesting I think it does depend on the format of the meeting and that's again where you ask that question uh, of the organizer just ask them about the structure of the meeting try to see if you can speak to someone who's been to the meeting before and then you can you can have a conversation with them what, what was it like what what should I expect um yeah you 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 I mean just try to show up I would say just in a professional manner and uh you can always sort of um soften it a little bit if you find it's very cash. But I would I would say, again, it all comes down to that research and then being prepared, knowing what to expect and, and going in feeling feeling comfortable knowing how you're going to introduce yourself. That's my take on that. Any other thoughts, Kathy? Um, Sorry, I'm putting you on the spot now. <laughs> I know, thank you for that. Um, I, I don't know if I missed it, but in online networking, um, did you talk about saving the chat when people use I it? Didn't. Thank you for that point. Absolutely. Because so that's usually know. missed most of the yeah. time when, when people yeah. will introduce themselves. It's, it's like your virtual business card, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. And so, yes, please do save the chat and please reach out and connect with me because I believe my information is still there. I hope it is. It's Mm -hmm. Yes, the session has been recorded and it will be emailed to everyone. And uh, I just want to wrap up by saying thank you, Sue, for this wonderful uh, jam-packed session. Uh, thank you, everyone, for being here and attentive. I hope that you found this valuable. And I do invite you to stay connected with us. You can subscribe to our newsletter, which is at the bottom of the screen. Uh, we've got this great free session coming up all about uh, strategizing the price of your products and services. So that's a, a more hard skill type of webinar that we're hosting. And I love that we host both these soft skills and hard skills and kind of toggle between the two because they're both really valuable and uh, paramount to running a successful business. So thanks again, everyone. I know Jen, um, my colleague is gonna pop in the chat asking for some feedback. So thank you so much, um, Jen, if you can pop that in. Oh, she's also even included our upcoming events and our newsletter subscription. And Jen, um, do we send out the, the uh, feedback in a survey in the follow-up email or in the chat right now? Oh, it's right up on the screen right now. There it is, perfect. <laughs> oh, good, it's already coming up. Awesome. Appreciate you uh, putting your feedback in. It's awesome. Thank you. Good. Okay. Well, once you do that, um, we will call that a wrap. Thank you, everyone. I uh, really appreciate your time and, and being present with us today. So all the best in your business, and we look forward to staying connected with you. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Jennifer, for doing a great job. Appreciate all your support. It was great being here. And I look forward to connecting with you on LinkedIn. Yes, I'm going to send you a, a an invite, Sue. I don't think we're connected yet, so let's do it. We should. We've got to do something about that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So.